Hi, welcome to Go Again Driving School's YouTube channel. This is my first theory test help video and the subject is stopping distances. This is one of the most confusing subjects to learn for the British theory test, so I'm hoping you'll be better equipped to get the theory test questions right by the end of the video. Please subscribe for free by clicking the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and please share the video if you think your friends might find it helpful. Let's look at one of the charts you'll find on the highway code and online. You'll see that they start at 20 mile an hour and give you the overall stopping distance in meters, then feet, and then even in car lengths. However, the breakdown between thinking distance and braking distance is only given in meters. This subconsciously encourages you to think about the answers in meters, which creates a problem as you can't simply calculate the distances in meters, but you can in feet. And luckily for you, all the multiple choice answers on the theory test will be in both meters and feet. So let's start by looking at the things we need to know when we calculate these numbers. Firstly, you'll need the speed limit. Then we multiply it. We call this the X factor. This gives us the overall stopping distance in feet. Next comes the thinking distance. The thinking distance is always equal to the speed limit, but in feet. You then subtract the thinking distance from the overall stopping distance to give you the braking distance. Okay, so let's start with the lowest speed limit you'll find on British roads, 20 miles per hour. We multiply this by two, giving us an overall stopping distance of 40 feet. The thinking distance is always equal to the speed limit. So in this case, it's 20 feet. So 40 feet minus 20 feet equals a braking distance of 20 feet. So far, so good. Next, we move on to 30 miles an hour. The X factor at 30 miles an hour is 2.5. So we multiply the 30 miles an hour by 2.5 and that gives us an overall stopping distance of 75 feet. Remember, the thinking distance is always equal to the speed limit, so 30 feet. So 75 feet, take away 30 feet equals a braking distance of 45 feet. Next, we have 40 miles an hour. We multiply that by 3, giving us an overall stopping distance of 120 feet. Now as it goes, the official answer is 118 feet, and I don't know why it's 2 out, but there it is. This won't cause you a problem on the actual theory test though, as you'll just pick the answer that's closest to 120 feet. We will base the braking distance calculation on 120 feet though, for consistency. So then we take the thinking distance of 40 feet, so 120 feet minus 40 feet equals a braking distance of 80 feet. Next is 50 miles an hour. You might have noticed by now that the X factor increases by a half for every 10 miles an hour the speed limit increases. So the X factor for 50 miles an hour is 3.5. Let's take 50 and multiply it by 3.5. At this point, your average person is starting to struggle with a mental arithmetic. So this is what I do. I take the half of the 50, giving me 25. I then multiply the 50 by 3, giving me 150. And I then add the 25 to the 150 to give me 175. So the overall stopping distance at 50 mile an hour is 175 feet. The thinking distance is 50 miles an hour, the same as always the speed limit. So we take the 175 feet overall stopping distance, we minus the 50 feet thinking distance, and this gives us a braking distance of 125 feet. Next up, it's 60 miles an hour. Multiply it by four, giving us 240 feet. We then take away the thinking distance of 60 feet, and this equals 180 feet braking distance. Finally, we have 70 miles an hour. We multiply that by 4.5. So give me half of 70, 35. Four times 70 is 280. Add the 280 to the 35. And that gives me an overall stopping distance of 315 feet. The thinking distance, of course, is 70 feet, the same as the speed limit. So we 
take 315, we minus the empty, and this equals a braking distance of 245 feet. Now, all you have to remember is this, that stopping distances are doubled in the wet and they're multiplied by 10 in snowy or icy conditions. So that's it. That's the end of the video. Thanks for taking a look. Don't forget, subscribing to my channel is free and you'll get updates on any more videos that I add in the future. Good luck with your theory test. And if you've got your practical test coming up in Swansea anytime soon, take a look at my other videos where I've posted some videos on how to negotiate some of the more difficult roundabouts in Swansea.